Hello everyone, welcome back to Agent of Gash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the law of the Soul Blight, which is a fraction belonging to the Death Grand Alliance. I know in my previous video I said I'll be looking at their rules as well in the Soul Blight video, but what I'm actually going to do is divide the Soul Blight into three different videos. The first one being their law, so you get a good understanding about them. The second one about their units and how to use them in game. And then the third one will be about their allegiance abilities. The reason I'm splitting them into three is because after doing extensive research, um, it will just take too long if it's just a single video. So I thought this would be the best way to do it. So with the pre-ramble out of the way, let's dive in. The Soul Blight. Vampires are a curse upon the living who hunger endlessly for fresh blood. Regal vampire lords and undead princes are drenched in gore as they drive their fangs deep into their prey, while gigantic bats and slavering vargeists rend their victims apart. The soul-blight curse brings with it life everlasting, inhuman strength and an insatiable thirst for blood. Countless kings, queens and princes across the mortal realms bear the shadow upon their spirit ruling over empires of night to feed their unnatural appetites. They raise armies of undead, sire more nests of vampires, and march to war so their kingdoms might forever run red with rivers of blood. The most powerful of the soul blight are the vampire lords. They are children of ancient bloodlines and include the blood of both Manfred von Karstein and Queen Neferata. Riding to war, clad in bronze plate, they revel in the carnage of blade and lance. Their long fangs bared as they hew a path through their enemies. With the touch of the soul-like curse often comes dark magical power. Vampires use this gift to raise up beasts such as gigantic zombie dragons to carry them into the press of combat. With huge fangs and talons the size of swords, these monsters butcher without mercy for their masters. Thundering along in the wake of their lord are the blood knights. These are the shock troops of many a lord's army. And each bears the terrible soul-like curse within their black heart. Mounted upon steeds infused with dark magic, the knights crash into their enemies, their swords and lances turning their opponents into mangled corpses. Along the brutality and raw hunger of the Blood Knights and their lords are other kind of soul blight vampire. Coven thrones, propelled into battle by clouds of several spirits, act as chariots for vampire queens and their bewitching handmaidens with beguiling looks and nerferous enchantments. They render warriors helpless so that they might feed upon them until their heart's content. Should especially promising suitors approach the throne, the queen wrenches these powerful or handsome victims from the clutches of her handmaidens. If she favours these fighters, they may find an honoured place as an other deathless thrall of the queen's to do her bidding in battle for as long as the warrior continues to amuse his regal mistress. The soul blight does not affect all creatures equally and the ancient curse warps bodies and minds alike. Vargais are vampires who have lost the last shreds of their humanity and have been reborn with the monstrous physiologies of bat-winged beasts, regarded as brutish distant cousins by the vampire aristocracy. They are tolerated for their ferocious strength and excellence at violent butchery. When they are not out hunting, these monsters tend to be kept in shadows by their kin, so as not to sully the beauty of the king or queen's court. Despite their social standing, not even the mighty Mortarches can deny the fury of the Vargais when loose into battle, and they eagerly include them in their armies. Beyond the sentient races of the realms, there are also beasts that carry the soul-like curse. Most common in the realm of death are bats. Both large and small, fell bats are among the largest of their kind, each with a wingspan yards across and eyes that can be seen glowing red as they prowl the darkness. Snuffling the air as they hunt, fell bats can be sent fresh blood from leagues away. They are drawn by orgy destruction 
and cursed by vampire armies and ascend from the skies to join in the Wharton feasting. With fell bats come bat swarms, storms of flapping leathery wings and hideous screeching, a cloud of shadow, the bats engulf their prey, bringing it down with thousands tiny bites and in their wake the soul blight curse spreads. Right, now that you have a basic understanding of the soul blight within Age of Sigma, we're now going to look at Lord Harrogeist, who is a character within the story and is the founder of the Bloody Alliance. The soul blight infliction knows its own and powerful vampire lords can exert their influence on any that have been infected by the blood curse. Binding together armies of bloodthirsty monsters, Lord Harrogeist gathers his armies in search of a fresh crimson harvest. Blood calls the blood like a scarlet stain spreading out from a sword wound. The curse of the vampire lord Harrogeist infects and connects everything he touches. Those beasts and underlings touched by his darkness abandon the people they once called their own and turn to embrace the new deathless kindred. A truly ancient vampire, Harrogeist is said to have once served in the household guard of Manfred von Karstein, partaking of the sanguine offering of his master's veins. Now Harrogeist travels the realm seeking out and creating more of his kind so they might continue the Lord's Red Feast, which has been raging since the beginning of his undead life. Whether Harrogeist once served at Manfred's side or not, he holds little love for the Mortarch of Night. All soul-like vampires and creatures are fair game for his thirsty alliance. However, and he has turned just as many of Neferatus to get his will as those of Manfred. Beneath the wings of Haragais' zombie dragon fight many handmaidens of Neferata. Lesser vampires flock to his side in battle, hopeful of finding a place at the bloody feast soon to follow. All manner of creatures heed Lord Haragais' call to war. Like faithful hounds, packs of savage Vargais submit to the ancient lord and race after his enemies at a barked command, hissing in hunger, anticipation. Bats too choke the skies above, and many times the doom of a kingdom has been heralded by a rival Haggai's bat swarms. The vampire does not usually bother himself with calling such base beasts to the fray, as they come anyway once the first blood has been spilled. Their supernatural senses smell the rich red liquid from across the great expanses of Haggai's kingdom. Giant fell bats sail through the boiling clouds of their lesser king, blotting out the sun, moon and stars with countless wings. At Haragais' command, they swoop down on the enemy, paving the way for charging blood knights, graceful coven thrones and Vargais, all with fangs bared, ready for the promise of fresh blood. And that is my introduction video for the Soul Blight. I know it's quite a short one today, but as I haven't posted a video for a while, I just wanted to get one up here on YouTube so you guys could watch it. It will be the first of three videos for the Soul Blight that are hopefully given a really nice um, feel and a somewhat in-depth look into the army, their lore and how it plays. So if you've enjoyed watching this video, please like, subscribe and comment as all that really helps me to produce more videos. So until next time, remember, Nagash is all, and all is one in Nagash.